Hello, my name is Dale Maley. In this short video, I'm going to explain to you how I made some ball bearings out of wood. A little background on this project. I have already made about every possible gearing type that you can make out of wood. So for a change of pace, I decided to see if I could make uh, wood ball bearings. And usually ball bearings are made completely out of steel. Now usually after I complete each of my projects, Near the end of the video, I'll have a lessons learned sheet. But I thought it was so important in this particular project to give you the lessons learned up front so you're aware of them as you try to make a bearing like I did. And I made uh, two bearings using three quarter inch diameter wood balls. Now it took three attempts to get one good bearing there. And then I made two more ball bearings and I used uh, one inch diameter marbles instead of um, wood balls. But the biggest lesson I learned is how sensitive the fit of the balls is in the outer race as a function of the depth of the groove in the outer race. And I won't show you the math here, but trust me, if you make an error less than 1 16th in the depth of the outer race groove, that can result in an air gap between the balls like 3 eighths of an inch. So this is one of the most sensitive woodworking projects I've ever done to be that sensitive. Since I'd never designed ball bearings before, one question that came to mind is how deeply should the balls engage in the inner and outer races? So if we de define the ball engagement in the groove as a percent of the ball diameter, that lets us review this, and a 3 16th inch deep groove with a 3 quarter inch diameter ball gives about 25% engagement if you do the math. In the first attempt, I tried using, say, 20 to 25 percent engagement in both the inner and outer races. I found out that was not going to work. You need more engagement to better guide the balls. So what I came up with was using about 40 percent engagement on the inner race and 20 or 25 percent on the outer race. Now you could increase that engagement on both the inner and outer races, but the trade-off is the more engagement you have, the user of the model sees less and less of the balls. So my happy medium was 40% uh, on the inner race and 20 to 25% on the outer race. Now I'm using a flowchart here to give a kind of high level overview of how I made the wood ball bearings. So you start out with selecting the size of the balls and how many uh, balls you want. You also have a center shaft bore, you have to pick that size too. But then you got to calculate the distance from the center of the bearing out to the center of the balls. It's a critical dimension. Once you've done that, you have to select your groove depth as a percent of the ball diameter. As I just said, I'd suggest around 40% for the inner race and 20% for the outer race. Then, then you can select the outside diameter of the outer race. I'd suggest you add something like a half an inch of material um, after the full depth of the groove. And I'd also choose a radius that gives you a nice even eighth inch uh, dimension. Then you can calculate the ID of the outer race, and you can calculate the OD of the inner race. Now to finish up that overall flow chart, the next step is calculate uh, gauge outside diameter, which will simulate the inside of the balls. Then you can use that gauge to adjust the groove depth of the outer race until you get a good fit of the balls. Or you can also use your fingers and push the balls in and see if they all fit with no gap between the balls. You basically adjust, uh, you're, you're done with the outside race, on the inner race, you adjust the groove depth until, you, until the balls give you a good fit and they run good. One key uh, dimension that we have to figure out is what's the distance from the center of, bearing, the center of the bearing out to the center of the rotating balls. So we are going to have to do a little bit of math. Please bear with me. So what we know is how many balls we want to use and what diameter of the balls we want. We know that. And what we have to find then is that distance from the center of the bearing to the center of the rotating balls. So please ex excuse my hand-drawn sketch here, or part of it's hand-drawn. But you can see the three-quarter inch diameter bore for my bearing. That's a circle in the center. <clears throat> then you see two of the rotating balls out there. 
and if you do the geometry there what we're looking for is R1 which is the radius or distance from the center of the bearing out to the center of the balls. So we can apply a little bit of geometry here because uh, that angle in there is half of 360 degrees divided by the number of balls. And we know what the radius of the ball is, that's R2. So the sine of that angle then is R2 over R1 and we solve for R1 and it equals R2 all over the sine of half of 360 divided by the number of balls. And for the case where you have 10 balls and a 3 quarter inch diameter, if you plug that in, your radius will come out to be 1.2135. So fortunately we have this wonderful invention called a spreadsheet. So I put that formula into a spreadsheet then for some smaller bearings that you might use in small models, I've got ball diameters ranging from 3 eighths of an inch, half an inch, 5 eighths, 3 quarters, and 1 inch. And then I give the case for 8, 10, and 12 balls. And the far right hand column is R1, which is that distance you need to know from the center out to the center of the rotating balls. So now we can make a drawing which tells us everything we need to know to make the uh, inner and outer races for a given ball size and number of balls. <clears throat> so the ball is shown here cross section red and then the uh, distance from the center out there is shown as 1 and 3 16 and then I decided to go with 42 uh, percent engagement on the inner race and 25 percent on the outer race and you can see the dimensions how deep the grooves need to be also, <clears throat> I chose to use a one inch thick uh, pine material on the three quarter inch ball bearing. And then for the one inch ball bearing, I went a little bit bigger to inch and a half. But this is the type of drawing you need to know how to make both the inner and outer races. Now for the case of ten balls, but in this case they're one inch marbles, you have a different drawing. And I uh, ended up going with inch and a half thick pine material here because of the bigger one inch balls. And you can see uh, these are all the key dimensions that you need to make the inner and outer races for a one inch diameter balls in a ball bearing. So now we've explained how to figure out all the key dimensions you need to make the inner and outer races from wood. Now the next question is, how do you actually make the inner and outer races? And in woodworking, there's always lots of different ways to do the woodworking process and achieve the same end result. You could choose to use the lathe to make both the inner and outer races, or you might be able to use a router bit and table to make the outer race and then make the inner race on the lathe. The problem is there's no router bits available that give you exactly the geometry you need on that outer race. Um, there's one that comes close and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now here's a, here's a photo when I was making the uh, ball bearing with one inch marbles. So on that I could use a standard 2x6 blank because it's inch and a half thick and that's what I want. Um, I take a compass and I laid out the inside diameter and outside diameter of the outer race. And then I added two more lines to allow some stock there on the lathe. Um, the two finished lines are labeled F in my little drawing. And then uh, I drilled the center hole out at three quarters of an inch. Now if you're making one that's using three quarter inch size balls, you probably got to plane some material down to get the one inch thickness that you need. Next I took that blank to my bandsaw and I uh, sawed the outer to the outer circle which allows oh maybe a quarter inch of stock removal for the lathe which is the next operation. Now I have a simple three jaw chuck on my old 1939 Montgomery Ward's lathe so I need a way to chuck this blank up so I did, I went to Ace Hardware and I bought a three quarter inch bolt and I cut the head off and I put that in the three jaw chuck and tightened it up. Then I could slip this wood blank over, put a nut on the end and tighten it up. 
So once you got it on the lathe, you can turn the outside down to the finished outside diameter that you want of the outer race. You can sand it while it's on the lathe. Then you've got to uh, scroll saw the inside of that, and I usually leave a little bit of lay stock there for when you do the ID, maybe quarter inch material. And then you'll take it back, uh, chuck it in the lathe, and turn down the ID of the outer race. Now you could also maybe drum sand that ID to the circle line as well, as long as you're careful and, very, and try to be as accurate as you can. So here's a photo at the scroll saw, and it took me a couple times to learn this, but if you're smart, uh, you have to drill a small start hole to get the scroll saw in there, and if you draw that or drill that hole um, next to the line there, you can save that inside piece when you're done, then that will become your inner race. So you basically scroll saw. Uh, the idea of that outer race and allow maybe quarter inch for lathe stock removal. When I check on this uh, on the lathe, it's hard for me to turn the ID all the way the full width. I'm concerned I don't want to hit the rotating metal chuck jaws or part of that chuck. So I can really only go about halfway deep, then I have to flip it in for in and come in from the other side. It's hard to make those two diameters match. So what I ended up doing was uh, drum sanding to the, uh, to the line for the ID. Well, now you're ready for the hardest part of making a wood ball bearing, and that's making that inside groove on the outer race. So I chucked it on the lathe, chucking on the OD, and I turned the groove. Then I used uh, some inside calipers to know how deep to make the groove, but you need, want to stop before you get to the full depth. And then take it out and then check the fit of the balls in that outer race, either using your fingers to push them in the groove or make a gauge that simulates uh, the inside of the marbles. And you basically do trial and error until the balls just fit. Now the bad part is if the groove's too deep, you'll get a space between the balls. And your a bearing with wooden balls still works, doesn't look quite right because of the air gap, but it probably will work. But on the marble one, it really makes a clanking noise as the marbles go around and they have to deal with that space between the marbles. Because that groove depth is such a sensitive item to making the balls fit okay, my last few steps to try to get the right groove depth I actually switched from using a lathe tool over to using 80 grit sandpaper. And then just go back and forth, take it on and off the lathe, go try to put the balls in, and keep sanding until you get a good fit. If you use a lathe tool, you might go too far, and it's basically scrap at that point. Now you're ready to make the inner race for the bearing. So I bandsaw a blank out, round blank, leaving maybe a quarter inch material to remove on the lathe. Put it on the lathe, turn that outside diameter to size, and then go ahead and sand it while it's in the lathe. At this point, you should probably pilot drill the two screw holes you're going to need to hold the two halves of the inner race together. So go ahead and do that, and then uh, put two screws in, screw it together, and then put it on the lathe and start turning the groove. And just like on the outer race, on the inner race, you need to quit. Um, before you get to final size, take it off the lathe, remove the screws, take it over, and see if it'll fit you know, with the outer race, the bearings, and that half of that inner race. And if it doesn't fit, you get to take it, screw it back together, take it to the lathe, uh, keep adjusting, probably with sanding, until everything fits nicely and rotates freely. So to give the pine uh, races some color, I used a water-based dye, yellow, <clears throat> for the inner and outer races. For the wood balls, I have some red water-based dye, dyed those red. Then I applied one coat of amber shellac to both the races and the balls. You could use polyurethane also. However, because that groove depth is so sensitive, you may end up having to do some 220 grit sanding 
particularly on the outer race, after the finish is dried. And what might be happening there is that water base kind of raises the grain up and you probably need to sand to remove the grain. Now the last step is to apply some paste wax to both the inner and outer races. I used to use Johnson wax but it's no longer being manufactured so find another one. Once you get it waxed put it back together and then spin it fast with an electric drill which kind of gets the wax all spread around everything. Once you do that you should be able to uh, spin it by hand. Here's a photograph of my four finished bearings. The two in front are a little bit smaller because they have three quarter inch wood balls and the two in the back next to the coffee cup they use one inch marbles. And I include the coffee cup just to give you a scale so you know how big the bearings are. Now let's go back and revisit that idea of using a router bit in the table to make the groove in the outer race. I did quite a bit of internet searching. I only found one router bit that was halfway close to what I needed. And it's sold by a man of tool. It's about 50 bucks. And then the radius of it is 15 30 seconds or in diameter terms it would be 15 sixteenths. Now that's just a little bit big for three quarter inch diameter wood balls, but it, it probably will work. It's just a hair too small for one inch diameter marbles, so I had to widen the groove by kind of kissing it in a lathe very carefully. And C in the diagram is the groove depth, which is three sixteenths of an inch, and you can probably make that work for both uh, three quarter inch and one inch size balls. So let's watch some video of the three quarter inch size wood balls, uh, one of those bearings. And let's watch a video of it running slow by hand and also pretty fast using an electric drill. So some closing thoughts on this project. Yes, you can make ball bearings using wooden inner and outer races. For the balls, you can either use wood balls or marbles. However, the design is extremely sensitive to the groove depth in the outer race. It takes quite a bit of time and patience to get just the right fit. And oh, by the way, if you make the groove too deep, the outer race is basically scrap. Now I use common pine for this. It might work better, say, in red oak, but the pine is softer and it's easier to sand to the final size on the lathe than if it was oak. I bought the balls from American Woodcrafter Supply and I bought the marbles from House of Marbles. So in summary, this video explains how to make ball bearings from wood. Hopefully this video helps you on your projects. I hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe. Thank you.